Hey there, Hofstra fans. Welcome back to the W.B. Mason Coaches Report. I'm Mike Sullivan, joined this week by head men's soccer coach Richard Nuttall. Coach, how's your summer been? How are you doing today? Yeah, it's been an interesting summer and uh, things are fine, thank you. Uh, in the midst of the pre-season and enjoying it tremendously and uh, we're happy to be here. Pre-season, approaching the end too. You have your first game of the season coming up this Sunday against Colgate. You have one more scrimmage to go in the preseason tomorrow against LIU Post. Just talk about how this preseason has been going for the new team and how, how the guys have looked in practice. Well, as you know, there's a lot of new players. I think 12, 13 new players on the squad and we've been quite pleased with the progress. I think uh, our message at the moment is that there's anywhere from 15 to 18 players who are in the mix for a, a starting spot. So. Uh, from that, you'll you'll, uh, you'll guess that we have a, a great deal of competition in practice, and I mean, the practice is actually of great quality. So we're happy the way it's going. I haven't really got a handle on our starting eleven yet, but the good news is we've got 15 to 18 players vying for a starting spot. So uh, from our point of view, this competition is healthy, and uh, you know we're looking forward to getting uh, uh, what we think is a starting team. But as of now, we've we, we a lot of people in the mix. Those new faces are replacing some talented guys that you lose from last year's team. Let's start on the defensive end. Sean Foster, Thomas Beckus, AJ Lawson, Stefan Barea, they're all gone. Those are guys that have been staples of this program for the past few years. What do you lose from that group? Yeah, almost starting back four <laughs> if you take Tyler out of it. But no, you lose uh, soccer IQ, intelligence and uh, athleticism and uh, it's difficult to uh, replace but we feel as though we've done a good job in the recruiting side. We feel as though we've got a couple of other guys coming back like Marius and uh, Elliot who will help us out maybe defensively Elliot too and uh, we think we've, we've got a nice mix there. Now if you look at Sean in particular, he's really been the face of this team for the past three years. He'll still yes. be around the program in a little bit of a coaching capacity. What does that mean for this current group of players to have him still around the team? Yeah, I think it's very motivational and uh, it's great that he's an undergraduate coach. He, he can pass on all his knowledge that he's learned over the last three years and, and from his previous career. And uh, he's doing a great job in practice. You know, of course, we're uh, getting to work with the back four somewhat. And, uh, He's very insightful, he's a bright young man who brings a lot to the program, so uh, it's wonderful to have him around. Offensively, you lose Joseph Holland and Mike Anaruma in the midfield. How do you replace those two guys? What did they bring a year ago? Well, uh, Joe Holland was a tremendous talent, as we know, and Mike Anaruma's athleticism was uh, you know, as quick as anybody I've seen, over 10, 15 yards, and they're going to be missed. But uh, we've sought to think Elliot Firth may be a, a immediate replacement for one of the two and then we've got some good young lads coming in as well who, who uh, we think will help us. So uh, well, we think we're well balanced at the moment to be honest. You mentioned all of the new, the new freshmen on this team. Starting off in the preseason, what has your message been uh, to those guys to get them acclimated quickly to the college game and understanding that a lot of them are going to see significant playing time? Yeah, well, the, the, the message originally was uh, make sure you come in in good shape so you can show your best ways to the coaching staff. And, and to be honest, I would say 95% have listened to that message. So then it's been a message of work hard, understand the system, uh, open your minds up and apply your tools to what we're, we're trying to do as a team and it's not about individuals it's about what we're trying to do as a team and uh, so far the message is, uh, seems to be getting over there and we've had a lot of the young guys looking uh, quite well in practice. You have your third and final preseason scrimmage tomorrow night against LAU Post. You've already played Lafayette and Massapequa and then Hartwick. Yes. in upstate New York. What are you looking for as, as a coaching staff from those scrimmages from this team? Yeah, um, the first two games, of course, we, we, we probably had a little look at uh, different formations and different people in, in, mm -hmm. in different spots. Now we're going to be more, a little bit more strategic and you know, put the place where we really think they may be uh, performing for us now and uh, just trying to get to that you know, starting 11 for the following game. So it, it's really a little bit more strategic and a little bit more uh, pigeonhole in the players where, where we think they're going to uh, play and perform for us. Now, looking at the roster from the returning players' perspective, Roberto Pellegrini steps uh, back into net after yeah. missing all of last, most of last season with an injury. How has he looked in the preseason, and how confident are you in him this year? Well, the same as Elliot Firth returning from uh, back, back, well, Roberto's back surgery earlier was a broken back, you know, and it was in a brace. So we are viewing it as two new players coming mm -hmm. back, you know, uh, that we didn't have last year. Roberto's been looking sharp. He needs to. Um, polish up his kicking skills again, get back his leg strength and um, he's been 
performing very well, but young Patrick Prey, the transfer from uh, uh, Arizona, has been doing very well too, so he's going to be pushing Roberto as well. You look at the back line, <coughs> Tyler Bodies, the main guy back, one of the two captains on this year's team. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned Marius Flotibo, Felix Schaefer as well. Yeah. Of that returning group, Tyler's the leader there, yes. but what type of experience do they bring? Well, Marius got some minutes last year, quite a few minutes as the season went on. Felix has got a lot of minutes uh, in a different position, but uh, he's there or thereabouts for the right back. And then we've got a good young uh, left back, Rory uh, Murphy, who's playing very well at the moment as a freshman, so he's in the mix too. But there's a, you know another four or five players that we're looking at who may, may end up playing at the back. So essentially, we'll, we'll, we'll go a little bit more with what we're thinking into the team, maybe on. on um, post but uh, there's still room for people to uh, squeeze away in there. In terms of uh, vocal leadership in a game, Tyler had a lot of veteran leadership around him in his first three years. Now it appears that he's going to be that guy on the field, the field general from the back line. How much more of a role does that put on him oh, this season? Well, to be honest, he, he's the one of the captains and Maid also, but uh, he's been magnificent all, already off the field as well as on the field. He should, is uh, helping out the freshmen in there, you know, setting their lives up here at Hofstra, and himself and Maid, and uh, they've been a uh, great captain so far. Whereas we say it's a marathon, not a sprint, so we want we want a little bit more from Tyler and Maid. We want, you know, maybe a bit more forceful now and again, but very happy how they've stepped up to the plate at the moment. Chris Greaves, one of the most dynamic players in the conference in the midfield. How do you uh, capitalize the most on his skill set in the senior year? Yeah, I think uh, Chris will be the first one to say he's got to keep his concentration in games and whether we're playing centrally or out wide or, or, or out uh, wide out right or, or left, uh, we, we don't truly know yet, but uh, his crossing ability is tremendous. I think one of the top few uh, players in the country for pure crossing ability. So, you know, it's, it's a weapon, but we know that other teams know about him. So. You know, we'll set the team up to, to, to make the best of his skills, but we'll also know that other teams will focus on him, so we haven't got to rely on his skills. Maid up top comes in as one of the top returning scorers in the conference, one of the best offensive threats in the CAA. What are you looking for from him in his junior year? Again, Maid's coming with a little bit of an uh, armstring pull, but now you know, we, we're nearly back to where he needs to be. We're looking for leadership as a captain and we're looking for some goal production, but we're also looking to take the weight off him a little bit, yeah. maybe give him some more support up front, maybe slightly different formation. So from our point of view, it's, uh, as, as per last year, hopefully he'll give us a goal production, but hopefully we can support him a little bit better with uh, maybe getting some early support during the games instead of being a, in, in, uh, as a lone striker. Looking ahead to this week, Home opener, season opener against Colgate on Sunday. What can you tell us about uh, about Colgate? Um, very little, except uh, we're in the process of researching from the pre-season games. They'll be very well organised. They'll be dynamic on the outside, and at the back they'll be strong and uh, you know competent. So we know it's going to be a very very tough game. Last year, you have a very veteran group. This year, a little bit of difference. A mix of veterans returning and a lot of new faces. So, to begin this season and for the rest of the 2013 year, you know, what's going to be your expectations for this group and how quickly do you think they'll grow? Well, I think how quickly they grow is how their attitude is. And so far, it's been very, very good. So, I expect them to grow very, very quickly. And I think myself and the coaching staff feel that the, the strength is not the starting 11, but the whole 15 to 18 people who can play. Hopefully we can keep the tempo of games very high and somewhat uh, wear other teams down. And uh, then our two or three special players will step in when they need to. The Hofstra Pride men's soccer team begins the 2013 season this Sunday against Colgate at 3.30 over at Hofstra Soccer Stadium. For head coach Richard Nuttall, I'm Mike Sullivan. Thanks for tuning in to the WB Mason Coaches Report.